Good morning, evening, and afternoon, and welcome to the Spunko webinar. Today's speaker is Anita Lakshminarayan. She is a freelance writer for Gulf News, as well as the founder and PR manager of Heads Up LLC. It is my greatest pleasure to welcome Anita to talk about a career in public relations and what this entails. Just a side note, Q&A will be done through the chat feature below after her presentation and when she will answer questions. Spunko is an all-girls global student organization where charity proceeds go to charity. And with that, the floor is now yours, Anita. I think you're on mute, by the way. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Spanko, for inviting me over. I'm totally delighted to be here. And it's quite exciting to be connecting with all of you girls here and to talk about a career in public relations. Uh, let's start on a lighter, I mean, on a lighter note. Uh, most of us uh, love a nice sturdy breakfast, isn't it? And uh, uh, when you think of breakfast, it's egg and bacon or... Uh, for my fellow Muslim friends, it's egg in uh, turkey bacon. But what, I mean, none of us know that it all started because of a, a PR campaign that began 100 years ago. And uh, this was, this PR campaign was run by Mr. Edward uh, Benes, uh, who is the father, who's known as the father of uh, public relations. Uh, he was, uh, I mean, his client approached him and he wanted he wanted Americans to eat meat. The food manufacturer was his client. What he did was he approached several doctors, about 5,000 doctors in the USA, uh, where, uh, wherein he asked a question, is egg and bacon a sturdy breakfast? And 4,500 doctors answered yes. And uh, uh, well, uh, the rest is history. And that's how uh, it became so popular. So PR has a tremendous effect on the business ecosystem or generally on the environment. And uh, uh, it's not only that, if you talk about the PR now, now Lego, Lego, a popular company has come up with a campaign uh, which will rebuild the future. They use children and they allow children to recreate uh, the buildings and it's it's uh, it's an impact where again it'll change the environment with PR you can change anything it's the advocacy so how it all began for me is I started a career in banking and uh, um, I about four to five years in banking and uh, but I didn't feel that I was really working on my authentic self or bringing out my innate uh, talent I didn't find it extremely gratifying that is when I wanted a career uh, which will be a career which is a champion of good causes or something larger than life that's where I enrolled on events uh, uh, management course but when I went to study the course uh, the counselor there uh, he said that come on you I think you are not cut out for events you should be in PR because you're creating such a good rapport between you and I so you should be in PR I was like PR yeah you should be in PR and that's how I began my PR journey and uh, whilst I was working in I mean I was studying in PR I worked in uh, big events like Emirates, you know, Emirates Rugby Sevens twice and Shiva's Fashion Show. I also worked with Dubai Film Festival where I got, get, got to meet the Bollywood actor Ranbir Kapoor for his uh, Rocket Sing launch. Uh, so I don't know how much of you like Bollywood here. Uh, so uh, it was quite exciting to start with, but it's not easy as it seems um, because uh, I had to do a lot of work. First of all, networking. And, uh, and then I started uh, blogging as a real estate blogger. That's where I try to gain my visibility and try to meet everyone in the market. And slowly it was, I started, I started uh, becoming uh, very strong with, you know, aggressive in the market and trying to uh, send my resume out there, trying to send my press releases, trying to send my write-ups. That's how it all began. 
Then I was offered, when I did all blogging, networking, I was offered as a journalist role in uh, a property company. That's when I began my, even though I studied PR, I started off as a journalist. And when I was working for, as a journalist, I was offered in Gulf News to contribute to their uh, to their uh, section, like their business section, their lifestyle section. I started contributing to Gulf News. After that, uh, I was offered a role in DP World, where I began writing for the media department. I wrote about 100 press releases. I think press releases is the core of uh, PR. I mean, communication is the core skill for if you want to be in PR, but press release writing is also the core of uh, PR. So wherein I wrote about uh, 100 uh, press releases and white papers, and I got to write newsletters, blog posts, and so on. But then I thought I should start something on my own, bring about a change in the business ecosystem. That's how I started uh, Heads Up. Uh, it's a company with few employees and it has got a very good uh, turnover. I have clients who are retainers, but it's not been a very easy ride. It's been an incredible journey. I got to write my own narrative, uh, but uh, but what I would say it's it. You will have to be. You will have to be proactive. You have to be always networking. You have to be constantly networking. You have to be constantly sending out your press releases and show that you're always there. You have to be constantly talking to your journalists, and you and you have to update yourself. But what I noticed is I was always curious to find out what's cool right now. I think that's helped me a lot. Uh, when you come to PR, you have to wear many hats. It's not just you are con You could say that, no, I, I'm good at writing. I, I could just be a writer, press release writer. No, you have to wear many hats. You have to develop uh, media relations with uh, journalists. You have to write. You have to be good in social media and everything. So let, let's dive into what's PR. Rather than me elaborating, I think uh, now I know you. I just gave a you know, a highlight of my journey. Let's talk about what's PR. PR at the moment, uh, let me play. PR at the moment is, is one of, a, I mean, it's a thriving industry. It's evolving. It's about 100, and, I mean, if you see the net worth, it's 107 billion US dollars compared to what it was last year. It was 100.4 billion uh, it is, it is up by 6.6% currently. So what is public relations? Let me know if I'm very fast. I would try to uh, be slow. What is public relations? So public relations is an organizational uh, tool uh, which utilizes... Are you able to see? Yes, we can see. Yeah, we'll just adjust the screen here. How could I move the screen on this side? This one? Because I want to see this one. Um, we can see your screen right now, like it's full screen and we're able to follow along. Sorry, everyone. I think Anita is just having a few technical issues. So uh, hopefully we'll I'm get sorry. that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Public relations uh, is an organizational tool that utilizes psychological and sociological knowledge to help an organization. That is, you have you have the power to influence people's perception through your messages, through your press releases, uh, through your communication skills. So it is an organizational tool that utilizes psychological and sociological knowledge to help an organization present a positive image. It's very, it's like reputation management. It's very important to reflect your positive aspects of your business, or if you're an individual or a government agency or a business unit, anything. It is important to present a positive image of its activities to the general public. But what it all takes efforts, right? So it all, everything is done through a campaign initiative and there are communication activities that enhance visibility. What does PR do? It builds brand awareness. It increases your visibility. How do you do it? Through your press release, through your blog post, or through your campaigns and your initiatives or through your e event. So the communication activities that enhance visibility shape public perception and it completely tremendously influences a change. These activities create a positive public image for business, nonprofit organizations, and individuals from rock stars to religious leaders. You, it could be for an individual, it could be for a business, it could be for a celebrity, but this could definitely influence the perception of people, how they see you. Imagine if a third party like Gulf News, when it talks, when it comes to UA, or Times of India, when it comes to India, or New York Post, or Washington Post, imagine a third party talking about you, so that the consumers or your target audience or your customers will, will be attracted to buy a product from you because already, already a media big house is talking about you. So individuals from rock stars to religious leaders, PR is considered as earned media and differs from marketing because when you talk about PR, it is a module of marketing. Marketing is a whole thing and PR is a module of marketing. It, it tries to communicate key messages to the public. It communicates your key message, your positive images to your public, so which you have to pay for. If we talk about a celebrity, I think everyone likes Dwayne Johnson uh, in this room. I hope everyone likes uh, Dwayne Johnson. So he's an exa excellent example when it comes to PR. One of the most well-known examples of a famous actor who has effectively managed their public image and engaged in successful PR. Why, why is he often cited as a prime example is because of his authenticity, he shares his life struggles on social media, his daily routine on social media. You can, you can look him up on Insta, uh, Dwayne Johnson, how he does his uh, uh, social media posts. Because when you talk about PR, now it's not traditional PR alone. It's you should have a strong online presence, social media presence, the way he shares his daily routine and the charitable work he does, the philanthropic uh, activities he does. Uh, he uses this platform, Twitter, and all the social, sorry, social media platforms uh, to talk about his philanthropic uh, activities. And he has a very strong work ethic because it's dedicated and uh, he has a, I mean, he has a very disciplined uh, routine, which he which he completely you know follows religiously to the way he look the how he looks now, and his versatility from becoming a professional wrestler to a high paid uh, Hollywood actor now. He's the most highest paid Hollywood actor now. And what is the secret uh, for? I mean, secret recipe for his success? He engages with media regularly. He keeps in touch with the media regularly. And uh, it's also due to his positive image, which he has already created in the media by giving positive media coverage, by getting positive media coverage. And uh, due to which, uh, as a result of which, he has very good brand partnerships. Uh, for example, with Ford and uh, Apple, 
not only acting his entrepreneurship skills uh, are also you know uh, giving him the success he which he wants uh, he's a very good entrepreneur he has several businesses and not and what do you say you could conclude his motivational messages are also one more uh, factor for his success he regularly posts on social media and all his messages are motivational so this could be a great uh, case study for pr how you could uh, you know you could uh, structure your pr uh, campaigns based on twain johnson when you're trying to do a pr for a celebrity now let's talk about what are the tools for public relations i've been discussing about so many things whenever we talk about pr uh, when you talk about traditional pr it was all away always about press releases uh, photos, videos, clips, charts, white papers. These are the tools because you need facts to, uh, from a third party, you need facts where you say that you have done, this company has achieved and the profit margins are high because of this. So people need to see figures for you to, you know, to be able to trust you. And when you show the figures, they will trust you more. So that is the reason you need press releases, fact sheets, pitch letters. You will have to pitch to the journalists. You will have to pitch to the influencers currently because you know you see so many influencers on Insta. So you have to constantly pitch to them when you are when you want them to endorse your client. You need to pitch to them. Speeches, you will have to draft a speech for your CEO. You will have to draft a letter to the editor to the journalists, blog posts and guest columns, photos, videos, clips, charts. These are all your PR tools. So you will have to be good at all of this when you say you are a PR professional. Let's see. But PR is just not about sharing a message or it's just not about media relations. You again, I would like to reiterate it's about wearing many hats because you are talking about different aspects of your business, not just media relations. PR often involves special events, sponsor, uh, sponsorships, because you, whenever you talk about any announcement, you need to couple it with events. So when you talk about events, you need to find sponsors. And you have to be, you have to make a lot of noise on social media. And then you'll have to uh, market on email, you know, on uh, email, via email. And you have to talk about crisis communication. Crisis communication is very relevant when it comes, especially after the COVID era, where thousands of corporates, uh, to, in order to navigate their challenges, they used uh, PR as an effective tool to communicate to their target audience or to the public. So the crisis communication and uh, reputation management, again, you have to reflect about the positive aspects of your company. And these are the activities to name a few. PR has an array of activities, a band of activities, which you have to be good at. So why women in PR? We always think, why women in PR? You have, uh, because women are born multitaskers, they're multifaceted, and they're proactive and curious. Even I wanted to always, uh, you know, I was always curious to find out what's cool right now. So you have to be on top of your game all the time when you're in PR, and you have to be curious. And we are active listener too. And uh, we get the pulse of people when we look at them and we try to understand what they are really looking at. Especially this will help when you, when you have to understand your client's needs and you have to show more empathy. And uh, you should be able to understand the challenges faced by your clients. And for this, in order for you to function, you know, collaborate well with your client, you have to be more social and friendly and uh, bring out their, you know, bring out your creative skills or unleash your creativity. Show and uh, you have to be at, at your creative best to bring them, you know, to give them 
pitch your uh, client with the best uh, best campaign and also we don't have so much of you ego because we want to get the task done and we want to do it well i think we all agree in the in this way because we are born multitaskers So what attracts women to PR? Is it because there are more women working in PR? Or is it because, uh, is it because uh, PR is, uh, you, know, mul you know, you have to be good in uh, multitasking? Well, I would say the, key, the key factor would be that the PR industry has been a champion of good causes. That is why, you know, PR is very good when it comes to nonprofit organizations or sustainability for environmental, uh, from environmental challenges and diversity in the workplace to sustainability and gender representation, we know greater diversity leads to better ideas. When there's freedom of work workspace, you lead to better ideas and a more efficient and proactive uh, workforce. And as per reports, women in PR make up to 60 six percent of the workforce according to the pr and communication census and uh, in 2018 we could probably go into these uh to this uh and read more about how women are uh thriving in pr uh after the end of the session we could go or we could go later i think now would be a good time to go into okay this is just an article about uh, how women are thriving in public relations. Um, yeah, so this is what, this is an article on LinkedIn. Why, why are there so many women in public relations? Because, uh, Let's let's just go here. Generally, I would say this is because, or should I just share the article so they could they could go through it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, or we could have a discussion on this at the end of the session as well. Yeah, I think we can definitely have a discussion towards the end. And so, if you can just share the link in the chat. Yeah. So what's the PR's changing landscape? It's not like before, as I told you earlier. Uh, PR is evolving and a thriving industry. So with the with AI, you know, there's so much of noise about AI. So we could do, and you know, sometimes uh, some practitioners feel whether the traditional PR is dying, but actually that's not true because now we have, we need more expertise and we are looking at, special skill sets uh, maybe someone could be a good digital marketer so a pr professional could fo focus more on digital marketing the future of public relation in 2023 is surely it's good it's very exciting as the industry continues to evolve and thrive this time you know and technology have enabled us to communicate with far greater speed accuracy and efficiency than ever before especially with artificial intelligence, because that's taking the center stage or that's the theme for uh, many aspects of PR workflows now, allowing teams to automate repetitive tasks, automate, because there are so many things which you have to do repetitively. You could have, because we'll have to send out press releases to maybe 2,000 or 3,000 journalists, but with uh, technology, uh, you know, just screaming to help us out we could automate uh, repetitive tasks when they focus on the creative and strategic elements we could you know when when I, when it comes to a campaign we could monitor the campaign better when it comes to analytics uh, we could use several anal you know uh, tools where we could monitor a campaign better and automate the campaign for effective uh, execution and uh, that is going to be the central theme in PR, allowing us to track and measure results with greater 
you know, accuracy than ever before. By 2023, we may even see the emergence of new metrics that offer deeper insights into how our messages are being received by our audiences. We, so it's very easy to show to a client, this is what is happening. And we could show them the exact results, the exact measurement. This will help the client to get into, you know, do more of PR activities because it is it is more understandable and it is more, uh, you know, you could track it all the time. This could open up a world of possibilities for PR teams to better understand the effectiveness of their campaign decisions based on real-time data. This, this is the current trend in PR. It's online, AI, and digital transformation. Everything is it's going good for PR. And when you couple, it's more of an integrated approach now than ever. Because back then it was just traditional PR. Now you will have to couple online and offline PR and you have an integrated approach, which makes the client very happy and it's an effective campaign. Yeah, there's a rise of social media and online influences. Again, influencer marketer, marketing is in, has created new opportunities. So you could be a PR professional who could be only target you could be an influencer marketing manager or something like that. You could have an op you could get an opportunity in the influence marketing influencer marketing uh, functionality, and you could thrive there. So PR has become uh, has become more. Uh, it it is focusing on targeted experts now. PR professionals have always had to have. I mean, as I told you, even I wore many hats. Uh, but you could manage diverse projects and stakeholders by being an expert and you could delegate your uh, teammates to that particular task. It is difficult to do it all, which is why clients need more support. If your agency doesn't have the expertise in-house, then clients will find it elsewhere. Hence, many PR firms have evolved. It's very important for you to specialize in certain areas so that you could serve your clients better. So what are the key PR skills we are talking about? We are now talking about traditional PR. We are talking about strong online presence. And, you know, we, we are also talking about uh, AI. You should know how to use your AI tools effectively. But the core PR is communication skills. That's an essential skill, whether be it, you know, you're in the digital era or you're back then. That's the core skill. You should have strong communication skills. And then the ability, but this is always the core skill, the ability to maintain, build and maintain relationships with key journalists, because that will not change. Even though when you have social media, you can post anything on social media now, but still you need, you need a journalist to talk about you. So the ability to build and maintain relationships with key journalists, that, that forms a key a key skill or a core skill, the creativity, all these, all these skills are core skills. The creativity to develop stories. You have to unleash your creativity. You have to think out of the box. The creativity to develop stories that will be of interest to the media. You have to work on your angles. You, you cannot uh, draft a press release which is not newsworthy. Then the journalist is not going to, you know, he's not going to publish your article. Your strong and persuasive communication abilities to pitch stories and angles, and a deep, ongoing understanding of the media landscape and the news agenda. You have to study which media you're sending out your press release. Before that, you have to understand what what uh, style, what style the journalist is looking for. What kind of articles is he looking for? Is he looking for something which is more fact-based or is he looking for something which he wants uh, many other, uh, he wants many people to talk about that event? So you have to understand the pulse of journalists. What kind of articles are they looking for? Are they looking for fact-based or are they looking for more story type? But you have to know the nuances of storytelling. It's very important. So as I told you, it's an integrated approach. 
PR when it comes to PR when you come uh, when it comes to PR campaigns it's an integrated campaign offline and online so what is it screen opportunities so you cannot you can work in so many so many functionalities of PR whether it's influencer relations community management you can manage a community of tw on twitter or on facebook or you can manage a community on instagram where you you know you work on your client's account you say that i would do community management for you and the press release is taken care is been taken care of my colleague so you can do content marketing or you can do viral marketing you can also do social media management media relations, crisis communication, as I told you earlier, because crisis communication is where you can always, whenever there's a challenge, you can communicate to the public by uh, giving them the facts and how you will, you know, you will fix the, you will fix your, the crisis. Especially it was, it was very useful during the COVID era and how you na navigate your challenges uh, using PR as a tool. And event planning, because you have to be a very good event organizer. And of course, communication officer, because communication is the core skill you need to have when it comes to PR. Let's look, let's see about uh, who are the successful women leaders who are doing very well in public relations, prominent leaders. Let's, talk, let's uh, see Sophia. Let's go and see Sophia. Sophia is a, is a chief corporate communication officer of the Jospong group of companies. She's a development communication expert with extensive knowledge in public speaking uh, and sustainability with over 26 years of experience. But how has her early life and journey been? Sophia came from a family of nine siblings and if you see, she started off as a journalist. Her ch uh, childhood has, I mean, I will share all these links with you, but we'll just go through it once. Her childhood was spent moving from one place to another. But how did she start it? How she started this career is Sophia holds a master's degree in development communication from the Institute of Journalism an MBA in leadership and sustainability from the University of Cumbria in the UK, and a postgraduate diploma in marketing from the Chartered Institute of Marketing in the UK. And she's currently pursuing an MPhil in strategic public relations management at the University of Media. Yeah, public relations, you have to constantly update yourself and constantly read what, what's, what's really happening in your industry. This is very important. Uh, that way, that way you will be able to help your clients better. Or if you're working as a communication officer for a government agency, that way you will update yourself and share for, and it will further your knowledge, which will help you to write better your press releases or even on social media platforms. You when you try to you know advocacy, it helps your advocacy and all that. Sophia's acquired certifications from the Chartered Institute of Mar Marketing. She's also a member of several professional organizations, including the Institute of Public Relations and the Chartered Institute of Marketing in Ghana. Sophia started her career as a journalist with the Ghana. So it not only opens up, when you are in PR, it also opens up uh, opportunities in journalism. Many. And many of uh, many journalists, most of the journalists, they try to switch to PR after they retire being a journalist. So you could be on both the sides because the core core uh, skill is writing. Where when you are a PR professional, you have to be a good writer, whether you post it on social media or a press release using traditional media. So she started off as a journalist with the Ghana News Agency in the Walter region in 1994, where she rose to the position of a senior reporter. She also acted as a PR advisor for the Walter region. So this is something you can get inspiration from. You could be a PR advisor for a garment agency or for a country or a, or a, or a you know, like uh, you could be part of, uh, part of a community where 
you support uh, support uh, NGOs. You could do so many things. You could wear many hats. She also acted as a PR advisor for the Walter Region Community Water and Sanitation Program supported by Danida. In addition, she hosted two programs, Women's Corner and Youth Vault on Walter Star Studio. In 2000, she joined the British High Commission in Accra as a website editor. So you could also get opportunities in website uh, editing. So website editing, or you could design a website, you could create a website, write for your client's website. So you could do an array, a band of freelance activities when you're in PR, because you will have now knowledge in all of these functionalities. Subsequently, she was a liaison between the High Commission and the police for her extraordinary efforts in the role. Sophia was awarded a recommendation letter from 10 Downing Street, the official residence of the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Later in December uh, 2006, she took a crucial corporate communications role at Unique Trust Financial Services. Uh, in addition, she supported the various businesses in the UT group, including UT Property, UT Logistics, UT Insurance, UT Private Security, UT Nigeria, and UT South Africa. While at UT Group, she held various positions, including marketing and corporate affairs manager, corporate affairs and media relations manager, and external affairs. See, see, it has opened up several opportunities for her. Various positions, including marketing, corporate affairs, corporate affairs and media relations manager. I will send in all the links you could go through. You could go through, so you know, uh, Sophia's journey and get, you know, get a lot of inspiration about uh, how PR opens up many opportunities when you get into a profession like this. Not only Sophia, there is, there are very many uh, women leaders who are doing uh, very well. We could look at them as well. You have Grace Boo. Uh, I will send the links. Uh, you could just look at them. The names, Grace Boo, Erika. Do you want me to go through each of them or? Uh, I think we can just put the links in the chat and then whenever they have time, they can go through it. Yeah, okay, great. These are the top professionals who are doing very well in PR. The uh, folks who are doing so good in PR. So let's, now that you've seen many women doing very well in PR, what are the steps to pursue a career in PR? Um, of course, there are many things after you obtain a degree, you will have to do a lot of work. Even I did a lot of work by, uh, by networking, by writing constantly, by keeping in touch with people and getting to know who's who of uh, the big wigs in the UAE in Dubai. But other than that, it's important to further your knowledge and obtain obtain a degree or even a professional diploma or a vocational course from a from a reputed institute like could you could pursue from a you know from a prominent institute you could look for scholarships Coursera is also offering a lot of scholarships a lot of uh, pr programs so bachelor's degree most pr positions require at least a bachelor's degree Consider majoring in fields such as uh, public relations, communications, journalism, marketing. Even if you do a marketing, as I told you, one of the modules of marketing is PR. So you will have a knowledge of PR when you do a degree in marketing as well or a related uh, discipline. Some do an advanced degree. They pursue a postgraduate degree in uh, 
a master's degree in PR or related fields to enhance their qualifications. Some of them, they might do, they could be a literature graduate, but suddenly they thought they should move to PR. Then they would do a postgraduate uh, degree in, uh, you know, uh, in PR. I've seen many of them doing uh, a different uh, graduate uh, uh, faculty and then suddenly they move to PR. While not always necessary, it can be beneficial, especially for specialized roles or senior uh, positions. Let's see the top colleges to study in public relations. I saw some of them, they offer scholarships as well, uh, like University of Amsterdam, University of S Southern California, the London School of Economics, University of Texas. But there are some small colleges which offer in your local area, which you can look where they could, they could offer public relations. If not public relations, you could also look at marketing. Then you, one of the modules would be public relations, Stanford University. Maybe you could aspire to study PR from these universities and think about some scholarships or if there are some government programs that aid you to study, you know. And then these are the top colleges, University of Tex Texas, Stanford University, Nanyang Technological University. Well, I studied PR in Dubai. I studied I studied from a local college. It was a vocational course, but it was accredited by City and Guilds UK. So it could, these are the top colleges, but you could always study somewhere which is convenient for you and but still pursue a career in PR. Because PR doesn't stop just with your degree. You constantly learn throughout your life and uh, over the over time you could get you could get become a member of prsa that is uh, public relations society of america that's a, that's a very recognized body when you become a member it's uh, it will help your clients also better because you will have to follow either prsa when it comes to america or a cipr which is a chartered institute of uh, public relations which is which is uh, followed by UK. So either you follow CIPR or you follow PRSA. Uh, so when you become a member of both, your clients will really, you know, uh, you could vouch for the practices you do. You could, uh, it'll be all ethical practices when it comes to your advocacy and all the other things. But you could do this gradually over time when you gain your experiences and uh, start practicing PR. Stanford University, New York University has it, Washington University. You could also go to the link. I will send the link for the global scholarships and all that. I have a link here too. Do you want me to go to the link here? Or, or maybe I will send it to them. Okay, so we are talking about uh, what are the skills you need. As, we, as I told you, First step is to further your knowledge, get your, obtain a degree or a diploma, whichever is possible. And then the second thing is build a strong foundation. How do you build a strong foundation? You have to network. You have to look for internships. You have to look where, uh, you have to seek internships during your college years or after graduation. Whilst I was studying PR, I started working for a couple of events. As I told you, I worked for Emirates Rugby Sevens twice. I worked for Shiva's Fashion Show. So you have to be proactive and look for events there where you could work for and, you know, get, you know, get as much knowledge as you can. Uh, seek internships. Internships provide valuable exposure to the industry. And this will also help you to develop practical skills because it's important to have the practical knowledge. You could also seek in three level positions immediately after you complete your graduation or your post or your diploma, begin your career in entry level PR positions, such as being an assistant or a coordinator. Just that way you could build your experience and knowledge. So work on your skills. Uh, develop your skills and attributes. When you think about PR, you should start reading. You should be a voracious reader. So 
that is how you will develop your uh, communication skills. Uh, excellent communication skills. That is hone your writing skills and verbal communication skills, uh, which will be very effective because effective communication is essential when you talk about PR. Effective communication is information now. You know, effective communication is information now. So digital proficiency, you'll have to be up to date with what's happening with the, the social media channels. Uh, familiarize yourself with dig digital tools and platforms uh, as digital PR is increasingly important. Learn about social media management, content creation, and online analytics. Creativity as well. PR often involves crafting compelling stories and campaigns to creativity is a valuable asset. So just be creative, unleash your creative uh, skills, uh, think out of the box and uh, show your creative best to, the, to your clients. Adaptability, the PR landscape evolves rapidly, rapidly. So the ability to adapt to new technologies and trends are essential. So let's talk about networking. As I told you earlier, as a PR professional, you have to be proactive, join professional associations. Uh, as I, you know, like publics uh, become a member of PRSA, which I was talking about, Chartered Institute of Public Relations to access resources, events, and network op opportunities. If you become a member of PRSA, you will get to know what they're talking about, when are their events, you can attend events, you never know when you attend an event, you might get an opportunity to serve your client. So it's very important to be present everywhere. Networking opportunity, attend conferences and workshop, uh, attend industry conferences, and also workshops to learn from experts. Meet, meet, your, meet your peers, you know, talk to them. You'll have to talk to them and constantly build a rapport and, uh, uh, send out send out messages to journalists on LinkedIn, on social media. Just talk to journalists, whether they reply to you or not, you will have to just send out saying that I'm there, I'm there, I'm a PR professional and I need your contact. You have to have a bunch of contacts when you're a PR professional by the end, by the end of your graduation, you should have a bunch of contacts uh, in your phone or you should have you should have a diary or your visiting card folder should have at least 3000 names mm -hmm. you know linkedin on social media use social media platforms especially linkedin to connect with professionals in the pr ind industry share your work sh and stay updated on industry trends gain practical volunteer volunteer for a nonprofit organization offer your pr skills to uh, community groups volunteer can you know volunteering can provide valuable experience and showcase your commitment to the field you have to showcase that you're very committed to pr and you're interested in helping people you're ch interested in championing their good causes and just engage in some part time work consider some part time work pr position or freelance work to build your portfolio and gain additional experience Mentoring, seek mentorships, uh, seek from, learn from your mentors. Maybe you could take one of the women whom uh, we, we just saw, Sophia, we saw several other women. You could consider them as the mentors and follow the same path. And so it'll be easy to blaze your own trail in PR. So who can provide guidance, advice, and insights into the industry? So build a portfolio, collect work samples. You cannot be quiet when you're in PR. I'm reiterating this again and again because you will have to have a nice portfolio. You need to have a good website. Your web website should be returned by you because you're going to do a website for your client as well. PR is not just press releases. So you compile a portfolio of your best PR projects, including press releases, media pictures, Go go to an agency and say that you will off you write you would write a one off press release you would do a freelance work for them build your portfolio media pitches tell them that you want to be part of uh, their media pitching team and you would work for free and know and just see 
just see how they are pitching to the journalists or how they pitch to a influencer, how they are uh, pitching to other big wigs, you know, sponsors, because it you will have to pitch everywhere. So media pitches, social media campaigns, post something on social media, which is which is which talks about PR, which showcases your PR skills and any other relevant materials, case studies, develop case studies and highlight your successful PR campaigns, make your own case study. Don't even wait for someone to offer you work. Just go to some community where they take freelance work and um, study study that uh, NGO or study the uh, study a community and uh, or write a press release about them. Write something about them and showcase your ability to achieve results. Stay informed and updated. It's very important you have to be on top of your game. Read industry publications. There are so many magazines out here. You have Campaign, you have uh, PR Week, you have PR News Buyer. You have to stay updated. You have Scission, Scission PR. So you have to stay updated. Uh, read industry publications. Subscribe to PR-related publications and blogs and news outlets to stay current on industry trends and news. And then continuing education, it doesn't end with just getting a degree in PR. You have to constantly study. You have to constantly further your knowledge. Continuing education, consider taking additional co courses. Maybe you will have to take a course in digital marketing after you get your, after you become a PR graduate, you have to take a course in digital marketing or in AI and certification to further develop your skills and knowledge. And of course, job search. After you uh, you have gained your portfolio, uh, you you have enough portfolio with you, then you should start applying for jobs. After doing some freelance work, you start applying for jobs on on online job. You know you have several job portals now. Use jobs websites uh, pages to find PR job openings and leverage your network. Start a blog. When you apply for a job, showcase your PR skills, start a blog uh, and write, uh, start talking uh, talking about a topic that interests you, uh, which particular industry you want to focus when you're in PR. Maybe you want to be in fashion, you want to be in real estate or lifestyle. Leverage, leverage your network also. Tap into your professional network for job referrals and recommendations. Maybe you start a blog, you can send the link to your uh, network and say that you're good in PR and you've been blogging for um, two or three years and now you're seeking a, a role in PR. Seek opportunities for advancement. As you gain experience, look for opportunities to advance within your organization or seek higher level positions in other companies. You will have several opportunities. You should keep your eyes open and just grab on whatever comes your way, you know? Uh, you offer offer some free marketing, free PR uh, case study for your own friends' businesses. So you could start off by start doing something for your friend's uh, startup, you know, like uh, maybe she runs a boutique. Say that you would offer PR for free uh, just for one or two months. Let her try and see how you achieve results and then you can take it from there. And also blogging. You show her, showcase your skill through blogging. I started off as a blogger and then I was offered a role as a journalist because that's how I increased my visibility. I, uh, you know, I started building my own brand awareness. So PR can be, oh, how did that happen? Sorry, I think someone's drawing on the screen. Yeah, I know it's strange. Okay. Um let me try and fix that. <laughs> mm. Is it from my end? Let me see. I'll just fix it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So yeah, I managed to get rid of it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 
So be prepared for challenges. As I told you, uh, you have to be resilient and uh, determined to succeed because PR can be very challenging, extremely challenging because it's competitive and uh, you have to show you have to show uh, your key skills and you have to be on top of your game, but it can be demanding as well because with tight deadlines and crisis management situations, because if you're in crisis communications, uh, you, you have to constantly communicate to the public, navigating the challenges your company is facing uh, during those uh, crisis uh, period. So it's important you constantly communicate that you will, for example, if a food manufacturing company would like to recall a food product which was which had uh, some defects, he would uh, communicate to the public saying that it had some defective uh, samples, and then he would recall everything and try to give the fresh ones. So it's very important to be ethical and be truthful to the public and constantly communicate uh to the public so that is the reason you have to be prepared for challenges and uh, there's always high expectations when it comes to pr and you have to meet beyond your uh, expectations develop resilience and problem solving skills to handle challenges effectively always maintain why is dwayne johnson so popular with uh, you know because he's very He's got a very good work ethic. Uh, he has good discipline. On top of it, he's very dedicated and hardworking. So always adhere. I mean, you'll have to adhere to ethical standards and guidelines in PR, such as those provided by professional organizations, such as PRSA or CIPR or IPRA, to maintain trust and integrity in your career. Because when it comes to professional PR, clients look for PR professionals who know the, who follow these guidelines, uh, especially big corporates. So remember that a successful PR career often involves a combination of education, practical experience, networking, continuous learning, and being proactive in seeking opportunities and uh, building your skills to excel in the field, but also maintaining good work ethics that's very important because otherwise the client will not come back to you if you don't have strong work ethics by you know by referring to these uh, units such as prsa ipra or cipr you should have strong work ethics especially when it comes to corporate pr but you could start small always work for your friends business you know, a friend's a startup, and then slowly build your career all the way up. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nita, for this beautiful presentation. I think you mentioned that PR is an ever-changing landscape. So a question on that is, with the rise of influencers and celebrities in the modern day entertainment industry and the rise of establishment of businesses across the world, would that mean that PR is a saturated industry as many people are trying to enter it? Um, as I said earlier, uh, yeah, there is a fear that will it become a saturated industry, but it's not so. As I told you, uh, the clients are looking for more expertise now. So now you could you could delegate to your team and work on different skills. Now they're looking at so many skills. It's not only press releases, writing press releases and media relations with the, with the AI capturing the entire as the central theme in PR. You could work, you could use that to automate your own PR, uh, PR skills and you know, and be more efficient in delivering in delivering your uh, uh, whatever your marketing collaterals to your clients, whether it's press release, news realtors, you could automate everything. You could automate and you know increase your efficiency level. So it's more the efficiency level and the expectations of an integrated PR is more more than ever. I mean, compared to what it was back then, it's more now. And so, traditional PR is, is not dying. Because of this, they would love to 
uh, get more of traditional uh, PR articles than before. Right, so in this ever-changing landscape, how can PR help understand the influence on different societies and cultures? Come again, different societies? D different societies and cultures. So how can um, PR influence different cultures depending on cultural yeah. nuance? Yeah, when you talk about PR, you talk about diversity, right? Diversity at workplace, diversity in uh, religious beliefs, diversity in everything, right? So PR is something about championing a good cause. So diversity play, di you have to show that, especially when you talk about a campaign of such as Dove, it, it, it screams diversity, uh, wherein, wherein it talks about uh, how self-made women and diverse cultures can embrace every part of being a woman. And we see we see so many changes, so many movements. That there are so many campaigns, so many examples of a PR campaign which talks about diversity. So I think more and more people are going to talk about diverse culture and diverse society and multicultural facets uh, when it comes to PR more than ever now. Right. I think you mentioned in your presentation the term viral marketing. What does viral marketing mean? Viral marketing is, uh, you know, like uh, suddenly a, a movie song or something becomes viral, especially now uh, when it comes to Bollywood. Uh, it's always a song which is like a teaser and it becomes viral. And uh, this kind of intrigues, intrigues the audience to go and watch the movie in theaters. I think uh, um, viral marketing is more, more in India but it's catching up everywhere as well and you could do viral marketing even on uh, on even online now i mean uh, any for any movie or for any marketing campaign to work it has to go viral and that will intrigue the public to buy that product or you know go and watch that movie or uh, you know it'll lure the customers to to you know, get to the product so that they start buying it. So it's very important. The viral marketing is in, and that is done either using using influencers to do it, or uh, you know, or using social media channels. It's done through social media channels like TikTok and uh, uh, YouTube. You have to be really good at viral marketing. So just being conscious of time, we do have a few questions on. Um, can PR be a job that's done at home? So um, remote jobs. And I think that uh, if we were able to, if these people were able to contact you personally through any um, platform like LinkedIn and social media that um, you could be able to give them an answer. So could you just share any contact details that you would be uh, comfortable giving the audience today? You mean people who could offer them uh, remote jobs? Is that what yeah. you mean? Yes. Have several sites, they could go up to Fiverr, uh, Upwork, and I will I will link I will send the those websites. Yeah, you could do it remotely, because especially, uh, but everyone prefers to see you in person because whenever there is an event, but sometimes if you have the con right contacts and just with a phone call you're able to uh, draft send a press. Of course, you could do a press release. Uh, from from you know from your laptop, you could just write a press release. And if you have the journalist contacts, you can call them over and through. You could do it uh, remotely as well. Depends upon how strong is your contact and uh, uh, you know how strong your skills are. I will I will send in the link. There is freelance marketing and all that. Yeah. All right, great. I think um, you can definitely send it over to me and I can pass it on to the rest of the groups. And I'm just conscious of time. So thank you so much, Anita, for this lovely presentation. I think the audience has been having their own discussions on what PR really means to them and how they can enter this industry. Thank you to our audience for listening and engaging. And if you need any more details, please visit our website, www.spunko.com. Thank you once again and have a good day, everyone. It's been a great uh, joining all of you here. Thank you. Thank you.